Hello students, this is Garo Madaba. Welcome to the physics tutorial lesson. Now let's go to the topics one by one. This is the third tutorial lesson. The topic for this lesson is physical quantities and the standard units. The learning competencies or the objectives to be achieved at the end of this lesson are one, define what physical quantity is, or you will be able to define physical quantity. And then the second one, you are expected to list the standard units of measurement and also what they mean. Identify the basic or the fundamental physical quantities with their units. And finally, what are the prefixes and what are the scientific notations? Finally, you have to apply them in calculations also. Now, let's go to them one by one. Let's start from physics. We are dealing with physical quantity. And we said in our first uh, tutorial lesson, physics is one of the four most fundamental part or branch of science. And it is the foundation for all engineering and technologies. So we know again physics is an experimental science. If an experimental science, we have to make an experiment and we are expected to take measurements and we have to take the units of measurements in a great care also. What are quantities and what are units? Now, as we know, if we are uh, working or making experiments, we need to take the measurement. When we take measurements, we should use numbers to describe those quantities or the results of measurements. Then what is the meaning of quantity? It is the definite or the indefinite amount or the size of something. We can make it quantifiable. Then what are units? They are standards or they are values which can be used uh, in measurements to represent or to express the physical quantities. If we have no units, then physically the numbers uh, only will not give us such a meaningful uh, message. Now, let's continue. Uh, physical quantities can be definite and indefinite. It is better to know uh, physical quantities expressed in which way are definite and in which way they are indefinite. Uh, differentiating this is also important uh, as we are learning physics. If we, for example, say the mass of the box and if the amount is about f it is 5 kilograms exactly and the type of the quantity is definite. Because 5 kilogram is exactly known, we have the numerical value 5, we have the unit to express it, and so the type of the quantity is definite. But if we simply say the height of a boy and express it simply by using the word tall, this is indefinite. How high or how much of the length of the boy is categorized to be tall, to be short, or to be small, or to be large? We don't know. Such type of quantity are called indefinite. They are not definitely known. We don't know the magnitude. Then if we take the desire, the need, it is related to our feeling. And it can be uh, described by saying, a strong desire or strong feeling, but if you consider it as a physical quantity, the type is indefinite because we don't know how much a strong desire represents. For example, you can also take another, which is love, deep or shallow, or you can use another word, it is also indefinite because deep or shallow or medium will not tell us something quantifiable in numbers. Such type of 
quantities are called indefinite quantities. But in the case we said we have the height of the boy here tall, but here we have the height is two meters. This is exactly known, and so such types of quantities are definite because they are well known. The mass of the box heavy. If we say heavy, we don't know how many kilogram it is. So we have to know that the quantities can be definite or indefinite. If you are asked uh, or given some quantity and they tell which of them are definite and which of them are indefinite, I think you are in position to respond. Now let's come to the physical quantity. What is the physical quantity? We remember this also in our physics courses, but let me remind you. Physical quantity is a number or a set of numbers which is used to describe a certain physical phenomena. You know it is a number or a set of numbers. We use numbers which represent the magnitude and we need units to describe or to express and that physical quantity should represent something or some physical phenomena. You see, physical quantities are characterized by the numerical value, which is the number, or which we call the set of numbers, and then it should also have the unit. What are the examples of physical quantities? Examples, you can take distance, you can take speed, you can take velocity, displacement, energy, power, density, mass, length, and so on. You can mention a lot, students. But we should know what is the meaning of physical quantity. Okay, let's proceed. Still we are on the title of the physical quantities. We define the physical quantity either by specifying how it is measured. When we want to define a physical quantity, you can attach the meaning to it using how you can measure it or by stating how it is calculated from other measurements. What does this mean, students? Okay, if you are defining by specifying how it is measured, that means you are directly measuring those types of physical quantities. Those types of physical quantities are known as fundamental physical quantities or basic physical quantities. But if you are using those physical basic physical quantities to derive or to have another physical quantity, then you are going to use a calculation. You measured something, then you make calculation, and if you find another physical quantity, that is what we call the derived physical quantities. You are familiar also in your physics courses from the very beginning. Okay, let's uh, consider. Distance and the time can be measured by setting specific methods. If you wanted to measure the distance from Adama to Addis, just you can find the distance using the apparatuses or the distance measuring devices or instruments. Also, you can use a watch or a clock and you can take the time taken to cover the distance from Addis to Adama. But you cannot directly measure the speed by which you are moving from Addis to Adama or the velocity. Then during this, you need time and you need distance that you measured and you take the ratio and then you calculate what we call the speed. So, physical quantity can either be defined directly by measuring or by calculating it from another physical quantity. Now, the basic laws of physics involve physical quantities such as force, such as velocity, volume, and so on. But what we have to know is that most or all of the physical quantities are described in terms of more fundamental physical quantities. So it is better to remind you those 
fundamental or basic physical quantities. Because even when we want to describe other physical quantities, we use those fundamental or basic physical quantities. Okay, they are basic, as the name indicates, but it seems that they are elementary. But understanding them very well is important in any sense. What are fundamental or basic uh, physical units? Then the set of unrelated units of measurement from which other units are derived. As I said in the first slide, the fundamental units are those units which are related which cannot be derived from others, but which are used as a base to have the units for the other derived units. The fundamental units are well-defined and they are dimensionally independent basic units. The unit of one basic physical quantity is different from the unit of the other basic physical quantity. That means they are dimensionally independent basic units. Again, let's go to this topic. We are very familiar with this topic that there are seven basic or fundamental physical quantities. What are those students? I know you can mention seven of them uh, one by one. But to remind you, to let, let me just say them. You have the length, you have mass, you have time, you have electric current, temperature, the amount of substance, and the luminous intensity. Those are the physical quantities. How can we represent those physical quantities using symbols? Then the length is represented by a small l, the mass is represented by m, the time is by t, and then the electric current is i, the temperature is capital T, the amount of substance uh, that is the number of moles is, is small n, and the luminous intensity is I sub V, which is the intensity of light. Okay, what are the units also? You have to know the fundamental quantities and their units. The length is measured in meters, the mass in kilogram, and the time is in second, the electric current is measured in amperes, the temperature, the SI unit is Kelvin, the amount of substance is measured in moles, and the luminous intensity is in candela. And what are the symbols for the units? Remember, the, the symbols, I mean the units have their own symbols, and the quantities also have their own symbols. Okay, when we are writing the units, for example, if you consider the electric current, if you are writing using a word, ampere, you should make the first letter A in small. Because if you use the capital letter A and write the full ampere in word, it represents the scientist or the inventor and not the unit. Okay, the same is true in Kelvin also, students. Okay, sometimes these are very technical, but we should uh, be aware of those uh, points. Okay, SI units of measurement. What are the SI units? In this case, we are referring to the system of international units, which are the standard by which the amount of the physical quantity is expressed. Uh, we have local measuring devices. Uh, you, we can use uh, our bodies to measure distance on the ground, or we can measure the lengths using our elbows and so on. But those vary from person to person and from place to place. You can use shadow to measure time, but it varies and it is always not perfect. But we need the system of international unit, which is invariable everywhere, or which is constant and which is internationally the same. So, SI units of measurement are needed to make accurate and reliable measurement. If I measure the length of something using my elbow, it will be different from uh, the measurement taken by another person, but the material is the same, 
but the reading may be different because it varies and it is not reliable. To avoid this, we need the system of international units, and that is what we call the SI units. Okay, we need those SI units because they don't vary with the observers and we style. Everywhere, every time, SI units are the same throughout. Because of this, we can also call another name for the SI units is the metric units. As an example, we can uh, look here. Uh, we have the length or the distance of two meters, and in this case, the symbol M represents meter, and the meter is the SI unit for length or distance. Five kilograms, kg is a kilogram, and it is the SI unit for measuring mass. Then, if you are measuring time, and I write it as a three second, second is the SI unit, meter per second is the SI unit for speed or for velocity. So, these are the SI units, and they are reliable, they do not vary from place to place, they do not vary based upon the observers. Okay, this is the meaning. Now, we also defined in one of our tutorial lesson, measurement. What is measurement? It is the process of finding the size or the amount of the physical quantity. But when you are finding or measuring the size or the amount of a physical quantity, you have to have the standard unit to compare it with. So we need the instrument and we need the unit on it also. And in the, in the case of measurement, we, we need unit and the measuring device. Okay, now let's consider students. We can uh, mention some of the measuring tools or the measuring instruments. You can take the metric stick or ruler which is used to measure the height or the distance of an object or the length of an object. We have the measuring cylinder to, to measure the volume of liquids uh, in general. We have a clock or we have a watch, and using this clock or watch as an instrument, we can measure what we call time. You see again, we have the spring balance. Then using the spring balance, you can measure the weight or you can measure the weight then you can calculate the force from that also if you go to the clinic you, you will obtain those thermometers there are different types of thermometers thermometers are used to measure the temperature of a body whether it is a material or human being we can find the amount of temperature by using thermometer the ace one is the hydrometer Hydro, as you, name, you remember, is related with water or fluid, so the hydrometer is used to measure the density of fluids. Remember, students, we have different types of instruments. We are only mentioning a few of them. This is the voltmeter, and then using the voltmeter, you can find the electric potential difference between the terminals. You have an ammeter as an instrument, which is used to measure the amount of the current in the circuit. The electric current can be measured by using ammeters. Another is the photometer. You remember the luminous intensity is one of the seven basic physical quantities. Then photometer is used to measure the intensity of light. And you see, by using this anemometer, you can measure the speed of wind. Students, these are few of the measuring instruments. You can use the beam balance to measure the mass of an object. And there are different devices for measuring different types of physical quantities. And here the intention is to show you only a few of them. Uh, we also remember, we said there are seven basic physical quantities, but in mechanics we have three special physical quantities, length, mass, and the time. How are the SI units for each of them obtained? And what is the definition that is given to matter? 
how large or what is the size of one meter? What can we say? Okay, F from the first, uh, it was uh, defined as one over 10 million of a distance from the equator to the North Pole. This is the first definition or explanation given to tell about the size of one meter. But from time to time, because the Earth is rotating, the distance is also showing variation from time to time. So the scientists decided that this is not the appropriate way of defining the size of one meter. So in 1889, the definition given for the unit of length, which is meter, is improved and redefined as a distance between two engraved lines on platinum radium bar. But again, this is not totally reliable and it is universally uh, showing variation from place to place. So the third idea is proposed. Again, this, they defined, redefined more accurately, one meter means 1,650,000 763.73 uh, multiplied by the wavelength of the orange light. The orange light used for this purpose is emitted from the Krypton atom. So the, this is the current definition that we can take for a meter, which is the SI unit for measuring the length. So, using this language standard, it also contributed to measure the speed of light in the vacuum. You see, uh, this is the, uh, the, the magnitude of the speed of light. Currently, now, using the speed of light, now, by using this magnitude, the language is measured, I mean the speed of light is obtained. Using the speed of light, then matter is also redefined finally. So what is the meaning of one meter? It is defined as the distance that the light traveled in the vacuum in one over the speed of light second. If you calculate the distance that is traveled by light in the vacuum in one over c second, then that distance is what we call one meter. So this is uh, knowing this is important we just to understand the detail of where matter comes from. The second one is the unit of time, which is second. Again, uh, for the first time, uh, second is defined as 1 over 86,400 of the mean solar day. What is the mean solar day? The mean solar day is the average time between the successive arrivals of the sun at its highest point in the sky. But because of the motion in the universe, this is not uh, reliable everywhere, every time. The method didn't work to obtain the unit second. Thus, in 1967, for the second time, Second was defined using the cesium atom vibrations. Actually, it was found that using the cesium atom vibrations to measure second is not varying. So it's acceptable. Okay, the microwave radiation having this frequency causes the outermost electron from the cesium atom. And then this much cycles are observed for the outer electron to reverse it is spin direction. Then it counts one second for each of these cycles, which is a very large figure. So what is the meaning of the second? It is defined that second is equals to this figure multiplied by the period of vibrations from the cesium atom. Nowadays, we are accepting this definition as the definition of one second. You remember 
uh, this is also important. Okay, uh, finally, because in mechanics we have three fundamental uh, physical quantities with their corresponding units, and the unit of mass is another. Initially, it was believed that the mass of the platinum radium cylinder, which is kept near Paris, is used to measure the mass and it is used in different areas of the world or all over the globe. They have replicated or they multiplied or they fabricated it in many amounts and distributed over the world because it is used to measure the mass in kilogram. But it didn't work again because it is mass is changing because of the airborne and the, the contaminants. So this is not the appropriate way uh, to measure or to define one kilogram. But now uh, the scholars used and they fixed the problem by using the Planck constant and they also used meter, they also used the second and they defined the meaning and attach the meaning to the kilogram. Okay, uh, if we take delta F as the frequency of cesium-133 isotope, then one kilogram is defined by 1.47552142 times 10 to the power of 40 times the Planck constant times the frequency of the cesium atom divided by the square of the speed of light in the vacuum. Now this is the current definition for one kilogram. If we use those quantities appropriately with their exact values, it will give us what we call one kilogram. Now let's see prefixes and scientific notations. Once fundamental units are defined, now we can find a larger or smaller units which are related to the physical quantities. But what are the appropriate ways of describing very large or very small physical quantities? Okay, for those we need what we call prefixes. Okay, these prefixes can be used by the multiples of 10 or 1 over 10. When it is larger, we can use the multiples of 10, and when the units are smaller, we can use the multiples of 1 over 10. For example, if we have 1,000, we can describe it using 10 to the power of 3. If it is 1 over 1,000, then you can use it 10 to the power of negative 3. So we have to attach the meaning, what is 10 to the power of 3, what is 10 to the power of negative 3, and so on also. We have another uh, orders of uh, powers of 10. The names of additional units are derived by adding the prefix to the name of the fundamental unit. You see here we have 1000. If you write the word, I mean the unit, one kilogram, one is the magnitude, kilogram is the unit. And meter, as we know, is the SI unit for length or distance. K in this case is a prefix. So what is K representing? K represents 10 to the power of 3, so that we can write 1 kilometer as 10 to the power of 3 meters. In this case, kilo is a prefix which comes before meter in this case. We can use kilo in another uh, unit also. Okay, if we are measuring the amount of charge, and if we have one micro coulomb, then the micro can be represented by a prefix, the symbol micro, and in powers of 10, you can use 10 to the power of minus 6, and it is micro. Now, if we are measuring the power in watt, and if it is very large number, we can use megawatt power. So mega is a prefix which comes before the unit watt. So now we can define prefix. 
prefixes are numbers or letters which comes before the units to describe the given physical quantity. So, by using the prefix, we can uh, describe larger or smaller physical quantities. If we are using for scientific or engineering purposes, it is always recommended to use the metric or the SI units. Okay, so prefix, as I said, is a word or a letter which is written in front of a unit with no space. Sometimes knowing this is also important. There is no space between K, K and M when we are writing kilometer. Okay, this is millimeter. What is milli? It is 10 the power of negative 3, and then 1 millimeter is equals to 10 the power of negative 3 meter. So the magnitude is 10 the power of negative 3, and the symbol is small m. 1 nanosecond, nano is 10 the power of negative 9, and the micro, we can use it to describe the second, uh, the grams, and so on. So 1 microgram, micro is 10 the power of negative 6, so it is... Uh, 10 to the power of negative 6 gram. You can use those prefixes in different units where appropriate. Okay, uh, we have also other units which are not very familiar, but knowing is also important this. The British system are defined in terms of the SI units. We can have the relationship between SI units and the British system. But the most common are the SI units. This British system uh, of units are used in only certain countries. But because we are using different books, we can find the different units. So it's important to know those units. Okay, this is an inch uh, symbolized by IN. One inch is about 2.54 centimeters. When we are expressing the weight, just we can use uh, the relationship between pound and the newton. One pound is about 4.4482 newton. One feet for measuring the distance or the length, one feet equals to 0 0.3048 meters. We can use also miles. Sometimes knowing those British system of units is also important uh, because sometimes when we are working or carrying out calculations, we may come across those British systems. So when we want to convert them into uh, the SI units, just knowing this relationship will help us. The next one is the scientific notations. Okay, what is the meaning of scientific notation? It is the way of writing too large or too small number conveniently as a decimal. This decimal can be written in the general form as d times 10 to the power of n. d can be the number between 0 and 10, and n is an integer. Okay, d can have also other, it, it may not be a single number always. It is in decimal form between 0 and uh, 10. We can start by 1, 2, 3, and 4, 2, 9. Okay, for example, let's say we have the figure 3240. If we want to express this in a, des in a scientific notation, the first number to the left of the decimal point should be n0. If it is n0, then we say that it is written in the scientific notation, provided that we have the powers of 10 uh, descriptions next. Okay, this is large number relatively. This is relatively small number. So when we are going to the right, one, two, three, and here we can put a point, then 3.24 times 10 to the power of negative three is the scientific notation of this number. Be why negative? Because we are reversing back to the left. Uh, when we are uh, in position of finding the number in the decimal notation. Okay, uh, another again, we can see the prefixes and the scientific notations. 
uh, sometimes it may be important to uh, remember those uh, prefixes and those uh, notations. If here we have the 10 to the power of 1, if 10 the power, we have 10 to the power of 0, that is the basic and it is 1, and 10 to the power of 1 is called the deca, 10 to the power of 2 is 100 and it is called the hecto, and this hecto is a prefix, 10 to the power of 3 is kilo, 10 to the power of 6 is mega, and when 9 giga, and when 12 it is tera. You can also have the basic uh, way of uh, calling those numbers. When we just want to see this in the negative side, 10 to the power of negative 1 is desi. So you can take a comparison. If you have 10 to the power of 2, which is hecto, and 10 to the power of negative 2 is centi. Then 10 to the power of negative 3 is milli, 10 to the power of positive 3 is kilo. 10 to the power of negative 6 is micro, 10 to the power of positive 6 is mega. 10 to the power of negative 9 is nano, 10 to the power of positive 9 is giga. And it continues like this. Okay, for your information, we can have those to 10 to the power of uh, positive 24 and 10 to the power of negative 24. If it is positive 24, the name of the prefix is yota, and for 10 to the power of negative 24, it is yokto. So you can differentiate when you are representing uh, the prefixes starting from mega and then to the yota, the symbols are represented by capital letters. Capital M, capital G, T, P, E, Z, and Y. Respectively for uh, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, and 24. When we are representing uh, in the negative uh, uh, exponents, when then the representation, the symbols are in small letters. And some, in some cases, uh, you can relate the names. If 10 to the power of 21 is theta, and 10 to the power of negative 21 is zepto. 10 to the power of 18 is exa, and 10 to the power of negative 18 is atto. Femto, 10 to the power of negative 15, and the peta is 10 to the power of uh, 15. So these are just uh, to highlight you what is the prefix and what is the scientific notation. So scientific notation are important also in prefixes because we are using scientific notation uh, to represent or to denote those prefixes. Okay, uh, let's see some examples. Just uh, to make, uh, to understand more, write the following uh, measurements or numbers in scientific notation and in prefixes. Now students, take two minutes and then write the scientific notation and the prefixes for the following given table.
Okay, welcome back students from the activity. Given we have 3,270 3, gram, when you want to write this in scientific notation, it is 3.2 times 10 to the power of 3 gram. When we are writing in scientific notation, as we have said, the first digit should be non zero, which is appearing to the left of the decimal point. But we know 10 to the power of 3 is called kilo, so we can simply write in the, using the SI unit prefix 3.27 kilograms. We have 0 0.00128 meters, I mean meter. Then we can write using the scientific notation. Okay, as we said, the first digit should be non zero, so I should move to the right three steps, then 1.28 times 10 to the power of negative 3 meters. But we know 10 to the power of negative 3 in prefix is milli. So we can write 1.28 millimeter. Remember here we have point, 1.28 millimeter. Okay, here we have 650 million watt. And then if this is a big number or a huge number, then we can use the scientific notation to represent this number, which is 6.5 times 10 to the power of 7 watt. But we know 10 to the power of 6 is mega. Multiplying this by 10 is 65. 65 times 10 to the power of 6 watt means it is 65 mega watt. Okay, with these examples, we can write the scientific notation and the prefixes for the given exercises. Now, students, let's summarize the basic concepts or the tip uh, points in this uh, lesson. What is the meaning of physical quantity? As we said, it is a number or the set of numbers which is used to describe a certain physical phenomena quantitatively. What are standard units? Standard units are conventional units which are used to measure the physical quantity. Okay, we have also three basic fundamental units in mechanics and these uh, units are meter, kilogram and the second. So their corresponding physical quantities are length, mass and the time. We have also seen the scientific notation, which is the way of writing two large number or two small number. And finally, we define also prefixes and we try to list some examples of prefixes. With the definition, prefixes are words or letters which are written in front of the unit with no space. With this, now we are coming to the end of our lesson today. Students, thank you for your attention and for your effort. This is the end of our today's tutorial program. Goodbye.